All right. So obviously we've been talking about classification. So plants, animals, bacteria. Remember we talked about protists, which are unicellular organisms, so single cells. And there's five different kingdoms that we're going to look at. But in terms of ecology and the environment, it's really important to be very good at two things, making observations and inferring from those observations. Just as a show of hands, who in here does know the difference between observing and inferring? So a few of you do. So, and some people are actually better at observation than others. Are there careers that require people to be good observers? Yes. So what sort of career? Um, forensic scientists. Forensic scientists. Detectives. Detectives, perfect. So being able to observe. Now, when you observe something, as it says here, it's things or events that you notice, such as see, smell, hear, touch, or taste. It's very straightforward. I can see that the lights are on in here. I can count how many people are in here. They are observations. If there was a fire outside, I could observe smoke, I could smell something was burning. That's an observation, observation. So I need to make observations to then infer things. Now in terms of classification in the environment, you might go out to an ecosystem and you can make observations. The air temperature is this. There has been this amount of rain. There are this number of trees. These animals are present. Uh, this many animals are present. You can make observations. And from those, you can then make inferences about the health of an ecosystem. I observed last year, there were 15 kangaroos out in the bush here. The next year I came and I only observed three kangaroos. Could I say, I've also observed that there's less shrubs or plants that they eat. The shelter that they normally are in in the day has been cleared. And I can then do what's called on making an inference. The difference between guessing and inferring. What does someone in here, what do you think the difference is between making a guess and making an inference? Because there is a difference. What do you think, Jess? Perfect. An inference is based on information. It's based on information. So I could say, hmm, I can smell burning, there's a fire near here. I could infer that it was this area of bush. Okay, I could make an inference. Now, in terms of inferring, it's always based on something you can observe and it's also based on previous knowledge. So you are explaining something. So going back to the animal scenario, if I notice over, I observe, sorry, over a year, there are less kangaroos in an area, I use scientific observation to infer why. Could I be wrong? Yes. I could be. Inferences do not mean you are right. Okay, but because they're based on scientific information, they are reasonable. You are not just guessing. It's based on fact, based on data. So when you infer, it's when you use observations and your previous knowledge to explain something. So very obvious thing. So I could observe that the clouds are grey. My inference is that it might rain later. Does it necessarily mean it will rain later? No, but I'm inferring. My observations are when I normally see grey clouds, it ends up raining. Right, so my observation has led to an inference. You hear a bell at school, it's time for morning tea or lunch. When's the other times that you hear a bell at school? Home time, start of the day. Okay, fire alarm, lockdown. So my observation if I then start doing my observations and I'm writing down times, or I observe that everyone's going to the tuck shop, my inference could be then it is morning tea or lunch. When you smell garlic when you're getting home, you're probably having garlic bread with dinner. Or just Pretty good up. observations. Yeah. I'd like that. Or do we use garlic in other things? Yes. So even though because we want garlic bread, we go, oh, I infer I'm having garlic bread, you might actually be having something totally different. Your inference may be incorrect. 
but you're still doing it based on an observation. All right, oh, same good old kangaroos again. Observe kangaroo droppings on the ground, you can infer that this kangaroo's nearby or that they have been, all right? Now, there's a little activity here. I want you to really think about these. So observe and describe. So you can write next to them the optical, um, optical illusions below. So infer why we see these images as optical illusions. Some of you might have actually looked up things before and, and you have an idea of why our brain makes things look different to how they actually are. But when you have a look at these, I want you to really try, so observe it and try and scroll up and down and have a look. So I always with this one, if you scroll up and down slowly with this top one, do those lines, let's do this one. Do these lines look like they're bent or not straight across the page? Okay, but when you, yeah, but when you scroll, have a look at what happens. Are they actually straight lines? So from that, so that's an observation I'm making. Yeah, the lines across are actually straight across the page. They're parallel to each other. So from that though, why, how, what could I infer? What's making that happen? Yeah, so what's happened is the squares are all offset a little bit and your brain's interpreting that as that line is moving up and down. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are most of you seeing these white dots change to black? Yeah. Yeah, but technically they are all white dots. But what's happening is your brain's trying to interpret that there's black, then there's gray, and then there's small areas of white, and your brain is trying to fill in information. When you look at something, what part in your vision is clear, really? What's the only part that's really clear? Oh, it's an area yeah. The size of your yeah. So it's where I'm directly looking. So if I'm looking right at you, you're clear. But realistically, everything around you is not in focus for me. And is my brain filling in a lot of information? Yeah. My brain's filling in a lot. I know there's people around. I know where you're sitting. But the only <coughs> thing I'm seeing really clearly is what I'm looking directly at. But our brain fills in a lot. So a lot of things with optical illusions, it's stuff like if you walk towards a door and you're walking towards a rectangle and you're moving, your brain's filling in information about your movement and where you're going. So people have learnt to manipulate it to sort of confuse people. Some of you might have seen some of these before. What's happening in the first one? Bunny and a duck. Yeah, who can see that? Put your hand up. Who can see a rabbit and a duck? No. Young lady first. Oh, yeah, I see that. So here's a feather in her hair. This is her hair and she's looking away. So this is her eyelash and her nose. So this is her face and her chin. The other one I find easier to see. So the other one's an old lady with a cloak on. So this person's looking this way. This is her nose, one eye, the other eye, her mouth, her chin, and she's got a coat on. You can have a look at these in a minute, and I don't mind, have, you can Google some of these. I've put a couple of videos up if you want to have a look too. This is a really good one where the guy from Veritasium, he does one that's like a full on life size one, which is very cool. So he does that. And this one here won an award. Um, every year there's actually an award for optical illusions. This one won, I think, two years ago, and it looks the same when it's rotating it's very cool. So you can watch it on um, YouTube in a minute. There's, but there's a heap. If you're interested in this, look up how optical illusions work and how, how your brain interprets things. Um, what I thought I'd put up in terms of science too, I know there's a few of you in here that really like to draw and like art. Um, a, a major area of science and something when, when scientists came over with the first fleet, it was all about t doing scientific diagrams and observing nature. Being able to draw things that you find in nature is a very, very good skill to have. Uh, and there's Ernest Haeckel, he's very famous. So he's sort of known as the man who merged science and art together. And he was very popular for his drawings of organisms. And they just looked really, really cool. So there's whole books of his work. Here you've got cuttlefish and octopus and squid. Wait, so all these things so, so he, he drew these by hand. 
Yes. Yeah. There's fields in science where you can be a very good drawer and you draw scientific diagrams. Um, textbooks need scientific diagrams. Uh, but it's a very, very good skill to develop if you're interested in both. I'm going to briefly explain these now for you. And I would like you to write them down, but you can also use some more information here. So that's quantitative and qualitative observation. So I'll go through that. And then after that, at the bottom, there is a little activity for you to do to a diagram where you read this and it talks about you've got to make observations and inferences from what you see. When we are doing our observations and we are making inferences, we are collecting data and there's two types of observations or data collection that we can do. So the two types of data collection are quantitative and qualitative. There's two things whenever we do an experiment that we can record. We can just record our observations. When we did our filtering experiment, we observed that the water went from dirty to clear, that there was dirt stuck on the filter paper. We made observations. Now, quantitative versus qualitative. Observations such as the water went clearer that is qualitative. It is about a quality of something. It's an observation. It was this color, then it was this color. Okay, or it was burning, or it felt hot, or it felt cold. Now that's all relative. Is that necessarily very good scientifically to just say it felt hot or it felt cold? What's better? To say hot, like how, how hot. So give the actual temperature. Now temperature is quantitative it's a quantity so quantitative data is where you actually record specific numbers it's numerical it's a quantity it was this many degrees it increased by five degrees it decreased by five degrees there were 15 kangaroos in the field not just I saw lots of kangaroos, is seeing kangaroos an observation? Yes. I can look out there and see kangaroos. I'm observing, but that's qualitative, whereas quantitative is numbers. Like quantities. quantities. 